JT did it again. This is On Air with JT. Join JT, visionary and host for a 420 friendly improv and variety talk show featuring pop culture, news, interviews, debates, and the home of the famous JT Rants. Here, mental health awareness is at the forefront. Have a great day, the JT way. On air with JT. How's it going, everybody? You are listening or watching a brand new episode of On Air with JT. And like always, my name is Justin Thomas, but you can call me JT. And I'm here with my co-host, Madeline Haley Marquez. What's up, Madeline? What's up, JT? Not much. Just sitting here. Hey. You know. Another day, right? Another day, another dollar. That's right. Fucking 4 a.m. fucking recording on some 2 chain shit. Mama murder. <laughs> What'd you say? Like, <laughs> this is the first time. Lyrics. That's, that's, how, that's how the first part of the song goes. Duh. I didn't even hear what you said, though. It was all like, it was mumble. It was like, it sounded like Uzi that was on. Like, <laughs> it just took like four pints of lean. Oh no! I said, "Mama, m- murder." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, murder beats. Uh, I can't wait to interview him. His resume is crazy. Two chains. Ah, uh, no, murder beats. The, pro- oh, okay. the producer. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Murder on the beat. Yep, it's just who I referenced. I love. I I'm so like fascinated and like I just find it so funny with some of these producers and it's I'm not like throwing shade or like shitting on them but with like their creative like tags that they have you know like Metro like you know if young Metro don't trust you I'm gonna shoot you or, or just like you know Jaho Beats Jaho Beats holla at me or like remember the whole like era of like damn son where'd you find this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I still say that. I know. It, like, I'm so random. Like, ab- literally, like, absolutely nobody. Damn, son. Oh, where'd you find this? Trapaholics <laughs> mixtapes. <laughs> you should have done it. You do it pretty well. <laughs> I can do it a little bit better, but I think. <laughs> I don't know. Trapaholic mixtapes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. They should hire you. I actually do want to start getting into voice over acting on top of, you know, doing like on screen acting. Like I would definitely be open if I were to, you know, get not if when I get the opportunity, um, if I wanted to do like an animated movie and be like, you know, voice like a character, like I actually I would be down to do something like that. That's that's really uh, funny that you say that because I just joined uh, some groups for voiceover actors just to get some knowledge on that. And I've been looking at like roles for that too. And not just for myself, but for my daughter, um, you know, as, as a little kid voice or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get into that as well. That's funny. Yeah, I think you'd be good at it. Um, it's, it's so funny. Like I I said it on the podcast before, but you know, looking back when I started podcasting in 2010, when I was 16, like even, uh, yes, I know even to this day, I don't have like the most like deep voice or like the traditional radio broadcasting voice. But when I was 16, obviously my voice was definitely a little bit more higher. So like I got so many comments and like people would tell me like, oh, you'll never make it in radio. You have no, you don't have the, the, the voice to do radio or anything like that. And it's just so funny, like over the years, especially like over the past recent, you know, two, three years, I get so many comments about like, oh, hey, you should do ASMR and you should do, you know, all this, your voice is so relaxing. It's so funny how, like, you know, 13 years ago, people were saying, like, you don't have the voice to do this. And now people are saying, no, you should do ASMR to help people calm down. (laughs) 
it just shows how ahead of your time you are with everything <laughs> because you are already basically doing that type of stuff what everyone's doing now with ASMR what like like you said like 13 years ago right yeah I mean I wasn't doing like actual ASMR but I mean the concept of having a calm voice for other people to listen to yeah though. yeah but I didn't people didn't really give me that kind of people didn't really say that at the time obviously asmr wasn't a thing in 2010 anyways um but definitely over the past couple of years i've gotten a lot of a lot of i mean not, not that many but maybe like i don't know 100, 100 you know a little over 100 people have told me like like whether it's like oh your voice is relaxing your voice is so calming oh you should do asmr like stuff like that um and it's funny because i i always when i did initially like start getting into podcasting and obviously you know I, i've shared my first ever interview that i did with sam Mello. shout out to sam um it was such a horrible interview i mean in my voice i mean i i was 16 and i sounded like i was six um but it's it's funny because you know i was you know a little self-conscious about my voice not being as deep um, when I first started getting into podcasting. Like, it never really bothered me before, but once I did, like, get some comments at the beginning, you know, I did, as a 16-year-old kid, like, question... I, you know, can I actually do this? Or, you know, is this not something that can actually happen? Um, thankfully, you know, I, I followed my intuition and I followed my heart. Um, like anyone else, you know, you should as well, regardless of what other people say. You know, there's going to be people that are going to critique you. There's going to be people that are going to say, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, again, you know, you got to ask them, you know, have you did th have you done this? Like what have you done? Like I was talking to my friend Kirby the other the other day and we were just talking about this, you know, like when you get advice and everything or you know, you're talking to people, you should really you know, the the data and the information that you're getting from people most of that data that's getting processed and saved in your memory, in your mind, in your brain, in your heart, in your soul should be from people that are on your level or ideally above. You know, when you're around people that are below your level, and I'm not even talking in like in terms of like, you know, stat, you know, money, not even not, it's not even necessarily like monetarily just even just mindset wise, you know, so many people are broke just in terms of mindset. You know yeah, what I, mean? I, I really do. We, we talked about this a little bit on the last podcast we did together. And then, of course, I listened to the one you did with uh, Kirby uh, that I said that right. Yeah. Did I? Yeah, <laughs> okay, good. And the audio was I, I didn't know. Because this is the first time with this specific mixer um, that I have. And if anyone's listening or watching, they don't know what like a mixer is. It's, it's basically just, you know, a, a uh, an accessory that I, you know, you connect the microphones to to transport the audio to the computer. And, th you know, this is, you know, it's not the most expensive mixer in the world, but it's definitely not the cheapest. And... Um, this was the first time that I had another guest in the studio with this mixer, and I guess I didn't do something right, or I, I should have adjusted something a little, you know, the, whether it was a, a notch, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, so I, I do apologize, you know, for the volume being kind of fucked up, um, I'll definitely make sure that, you know, the next time that we have a guest in studio that the audio is not going to sound like that because 
even when I was listening to it, I was like, I can't, I can't listen to this. Like, even though it was such a good podcast, I mean, like I did listen to it, but like, you know, it, it was, it was bothering me. So if it, if it was bothering me, I know it's going to bother any, you know, everyone else. Um, so we definitely got to make sure that that won't be an issue and it won't be. Um, but there's just so many things in the works and I'm just so excited. Uh, you know, yes, there's been a lack of episodes, but we're making up for it. We have a lot of guests that are in the process of, you know, being confirmed for interviews. Um, we have some upcoming interviews that I cannot say at this moment. We have some exciting news with brands that we're collaborating with. Uh, so many things. I'm just really excited. I really, really am. And I'm honestly, truly grateful for every single person that shows support and love, you know, for the podcast you know, that shows me love, that shows Maddie love, that shows David love, like, we appreciate it, you know, um, I'm pretty sure I can speak for David and Maddie, you know, in terms of this, you know, we, we really appreciate everyone's support, again, whether you listen to the full episode, half an episode, you know, a minute, or like a clip on, you know, Facebook or Instagram or whatever, uh, thank you, like, it really does mean a lot. It really does. And uh, like always, you can watch the full episodes of On Air with JT and past episodes, clips, behind the scenes, etc. at my YouTube channel. Just type in On Air with JT. If you do have an account, I would greatly appreciate it if you could please subscribe. Um, if you would like to also, you can hit the notification bell so you'll stay up to date anytime I update anything or uh, upload anything, you'll get a notification. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and so many more different platforms. But I do know that a lot of people that listen to the podcast, um, not watch it, but listen to it, they listen to it on Apple Podcasts, on their iPhone. And if you do listen to the show and you you know, support the show and, you, you know, you like the movement and like everything that we're doing. If you could do us one favor, and this is more important than even subscribing to the YouTube. I mean, both are important, but like if you could do this one favor, we would greatly appreciate it. And it will literally take you like 15 seconds. All you got to do is go to the Apple podcast app, the purple podcast app on your iPhone, type in on air with JT, probably already on there because you're listening to the show. So just go back, type it in, Click on it, scroll all the way down, and you can rate the show one out of five stars. I uh, would greatly appreciate it. I'm not asking you to rate it a five if you don't think it's a five. You know, um, give me, give us your honest feedback. We greatly appreciate it. And if you ever need to get in touch with the show or any of us, obviously you can contact us at onairwithjt at gmail.com. Uh, if you are interested in advertising on this podcast, you can send me an email. Please, serious inquiries only at onairwithjt at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Justin Thomas Insta. Uh, I know that's a lot. So all of the links to follow me on social media, to listen or watch the show or get in contact with me is right at onairwithjt.com. Maddie, where can people follow you? You could follow me on Facebook. I'm Madeline Haley Marquez. Instagram is Madeline underscore Haley underscore Marquez. And uh, TikTok and YouTube are also Madeline Haley Marquez. All right. Definitely go uh, give her a follow. <laughs> while you were just saying that, I was like, Dan, did I just like, did I even take a fucking breath while I was just talking? I feel like I was just, I was just like fucking just going I think- on. <laughs> Just, I was just that going was off, awesome. like, damn. Like, all right, Jay. That's pretty good, though. That's pretty good. Show your voiceover uh, competitors that you don't even need to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the I'm like the fucking twist uh, of uh, podcasting and, and voiceover. <laughs> or, or Buster oh Rhymes. God. Yeah, that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> I'm in them as well. Uh... Shout out to Twista, man. He, you know, it's crazy. Like, cause I mean, he was the fastest rapper. I was so fascinated by that when I was a kid. Like, how fast he would rap. I mean, obviously, you know, he killed so many different tracks. But like, I mean, overnight celebrity. You know, just I mean, the beat, obviously, classic Kanye. 
I mean, then obviously slow jams. So many good songs. Got to make it with Trey songs, which is, you know, my favorite Trey songs song. <laughs> and uh, it's ironic because it's funny because when that song came out, it was like I think it was like oh four oh five, and this was like Trey songs like debut album I believe, but. And it did fairly well, but like he, it took it, it took him a couple of years until like he really, really exploded. Like he, like it was actually kind of weird. Um, if you look at his history, like, cause like gotta make it and, uh, all these songs, they came out, it was, I think it was Oh five, but like, I don't think he was really, you know, really like Trey songs, Trey songs. You know, because he was very young at that, you know, age. Even if you look at the Gotta Make It music video, you know, you'd be like, damn, that's, that's fucking Trey songs. Like, it's like fucking looking at Michael B. Jordan in The Wire. I feel like the first song that I remember from Trey songs is like the, the, the Say the, Ah. The, the Nicki Minaj the, one? Nah, the Say Ah with Fabulous. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I the Nicki Minaj one too, but that's that's say that was the one that really really uh, comes to mind when I think of Trey songs. Yo, women, or, yo, remember that era? Women were going crazy for him. I mean, he's a good. He's really good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's de- he's a good looking dude. Like, yeah, I'm not taking that away from him, but like, I feel like it kind of like went away. Like it like kind of like the whole thing with like Channing Tatum. Like that was like this whole era of like I, like yeah. all, every woman was like. Oh my God, Channing Tatum! But like nobody says that anymore. I mean, yes, people say that, but like it's not like as big as it. Like you know, people used to talk about it. I was never like into him. I don't know why. Like it just doesn't. He just doesn't do it for me. I mean, I guess it's. I mean, I guess I. I, I never under. I. I never understood why women. I'm. I'm not saying he's like an ugly. He's definitely not like an ugly dude. I'm not. But but like I don't get why like you know people you know you know if 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 you you know look at like episodes on ellen of you know channing tatum walking out you know the seats are just fucking soaked (laughs) (laughs) oh god women oh man i don't know why women get like that like have you seen the pictures of like what women are doing with like when elvis was performing or the beatles like their body is literally fucking shaking like about to have a seizure oh yeah like yeah i mean that was like especially the beatles i mean that was like i think that was like at least from my my knowledge you know just because of how revolutionary it was i mean that was like the first time like first time we've seen like like fan girls i mean elvis too yeah like just like fanning out like just like michael jackson too i mean there was so there's, there's so many videos and there was like one concert. There was like so many people that ended up like fainting at his concert, and not because of like drug. Like I don't think it was like just like like drug related. It might might have been, but like or had some you know uh, factor. But it, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, music can do that to people, but with Channing Tatum, it's just like, it's just people like his body, probably, you know, his, I'm I'm sitting here looking at a picture, and he always makes, like, well, he, like I mean, he does that, just, I, I've never seen, I, I've never seen any of the Magic Mike movies, obviously, um, but it's funny, when I went to Connecticut School of Broadcasting, when I was in high school in Orlando, one of the teachers, Mel, shout out to Mel, He is also, he's a working actor, and he was in the Magic Mike movie, uh, like, for a little scene. Um, Yeah, he, uh, it's funny. What? Yeah, it's funny. Like, I I haven't even, never even talked about that. I I, I gotta get in contact with him. I don't even know. Because I had him on my, my old Facebook that got, you know, deleted by fucking Zuckerberg. Um, But yeah, um. This Mel dude, like he he's been in so many like commercials and things. Like he got so lucky. Like when I was, cause like, even at eighteen, when I was at Connecticut School of Broadcasting, I was still like asking. You know, I was still, I didn't really fully know, but 
I, I even now looking back, you know, I was asking him questions on like, how do I get auditions? How do I, you know, do this? And this was in 2012. Um, and he got so lucky. Like his first booked role was a uh, fucking subway commercial uh, that aired during um, like that. Um, not the Super Bowl. Uh, it was like, I think it was like during like the Sweet 16 or something or yeah, or some kind of championship game. So it basically, you know, um, he did okay. Um, so it, it, it's it's crazy. And he's been in some movies and uh, he's been in a lot of commercials. So shout out to Mel if, you know, you're listening or watching. Uh, it's crazy looking back on those days of going to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Again, I, and I, I know I've talked about this, but like, yeah, like, I, thank God I, I really, and unfortunately it took, you know, a little bit of money, even though I did get, you know, one of the highest scholarships in school history. Um, I mean, it wasn't like a, a completely free, so, so you know, and I did learn a few things, but there were a lot of things that I already knew because I was already doing podcasts and like ra like internet radio for two years before I went there. So I already had a little bit of more knowledge. You know, was I, was I the best? Of course not. I'm not even the best now, you know. Um, but it, it did teach me some things, but... It, Overall, you know, it, it, you can just teach yourself a lot of things. And that's, I, I preach about it all the time, you know, like podcasting, self-taught, marketing, self-taught, acting, self-taught, you know, improv, self-taught, you know, have, you know, I, I was going to say being a comedian, self-taught, but I'm not a comedian. I wish I could be. <laughs> That's one thing I can't fucking master. No matter how hard I try, like, I just feel like, I just feel like Linkin Park, like, in the end, doesn't I feel like even you, matter. <laughs> I, I feel like if you got up on stage, you could definitely entertain a crowd with, with jokes for, for an hour. I, it, know, I, I, I feel like, uh, you think so? I, I feel like I'd be better yeah. as like a... a a host or like a TV host or personality, like a talk show host. Like, Obviously. I, 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 would do, I would do way better doing that, you know. Especially, I mean, there's some people on TV that I think I could even do a better job than. I mean, like James Corden. Yeah. I think I, I would do, I would have way better ratings than him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Shots fired. <laughs> Where's Funk Flex when you need him? Boom, boom. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, that was that I, wasn't that, wait, that was the fucking Law and Order fucking. <laughs> I oh, said bum, no. bum. I was like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> that's what I was gonna do, but. <laughs> oh, oh man, shit. that is really funny. You, you don't like James Gordon, do you? Well, he's a he, well. Supposedly, he, you know, he's an he's an asshole to a, a, a lot of employees or past employees. A lot of people have come wow, out, I, and it's kind of like the, you know what we've seen with, with Ellen, you know, and it's crazy. It's so crazy because it shows, obviously she was an actress and she was in, you know, a TV show before she got, you know, the Ellen show, but it shows how good these people are at acting. You know, they put on this amazing, you know, and am I saying that she's like this horrible person? No, I don't, I don't know her. I, I don't know her. But like from what has come out and you know, all, all that and even, you know, things like that, it's crazy. Like, I even bought into it, you know, and little did we, yeah. little did we know, like once that, you know, camera cuts off, you know, it's a complete opposite person than the Ellen that we're seeing on TV, supposedly from what, you know, has come out. It's so sad to think that because like, I really loved watching her. And her, and her whole, and her, her whole motto was, isn't it like treat like others greater and yeah, be, like, be, be kind yeah. and be nice yeah. and all this. And you're doing the complete opposite. 
I, you know, it, it's just so scary to think that that's the people that everyone looks up to and, and like, you know, starts their day with or, or you know, eats their lunch to, and, and they're really just all fucking evil people. Well, like, yeah. it's, I mean, there's crazy stories with these talk show, with some talk show hosts, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say some names, but like, I've heard stories that are public and non-public of writers and people getting fired for what they're wearing. Like like the talk show host, like a famous talk show host, multiple, were like, like just felt like that day, like, uh, I don't like what you're wearing. Or like, and one, one person was like, uh, did you eat fish today? Uh, uh, like, go home. Like, I don't like the smell. Like, motherfucker, who do you think you are? <laughs> That's so, I mean, I believe it though. People. Oh yeah, people, of course. Yeah. That it goes people, to their head and I, I'm see, I see it firsthand with, you know, everything that's going on. Is, is everybody like that? No, there have been so many great, amazing people that are very successful in the entertainment industry that have been so genuine and kind, but there's also been a lot of people that are not so nice and people that, you know, I thought would be nice and that I've been fan, you know, a fan of and all that. Like it's, cr you know, it's, it's crazy. And it's not just, you know, entertainers, you know, we're even talking athletes and the, some of these people really can put on a pretty good act. I mean, I guess it's because the, they don't want to get, you know, uh, out of the industry they need to do what they're told and that's why that's why they let people like that into the industry because you can well they better not fucking drop the soap <laughs> oh god i i mean it, it's just it's just a it's just a cruel world where if if they didn't get that way they probably wouldn't have stayed current and and been able to keep their show like it, it's the industry is cold, so you have to be kind of cold, which which sucks. But you know, it's yeah. it's all fake. Yeah. Everything we see is fake, obviously. Yeah. And, and and just to finish off what you're saying, that's a good point. You know, that that's the thing with the entertainment industry, and that's what also what I'm gonna have to deal with is that, you know, the odds of you making it are already just fucking you know astronomical, you know. Like, like the odds of like maybe getting like maybe like a like a one small little you know appearance on a TV show, the, you know, it's easier to do that. But like to be like a well-known actor, you know, the odds are so ridiculous. And then to you know get that, and then you know once you hit that level, you know you, you that the door opens a little bit. But then you still have to really break through onto a mainstream level of success. And then once you hit that level of, you know, success, then you have to fucking maintain it, which is, you know, fucking harder than even getting the fucking fame or the, you know, accolades or status or jobs or whatever it might be. You know, because again, once you, once you have that, that, that status or wherever you are on the totem pole, you know, you're dealing with people that are younger that are going and competing against you, younger, better looking, cheaper, you know, they don't have to pay, you know, the studios and directors don't have to pay, you know, them as much as, you know, maybe someone that's a little bit more well established and well known um, on top of just everybody in, you know, on your level and then you have people, just regular people in the world that just don't like you for whatever reason. And then, you know, if you piss off one person, then you have like the whole media or, you know, you know, PC culture, cancel culture, you know, literally can all strip that shit away from you. You know, that's why I don't get like, like, I, the whole, even just like, it happens with so many people, but just the most recent thing that I can think of is like the Jonathan Majors thing. And I was just so upset to see that because like, it's like, damn bro, like you worked so hard like to, to get to that level and he did it. 
and then you fuck it up. I just don't, I can't comprehend that. I just can't. I just don't understand. It's not, I'm not just singling him out, you know, and I know we all make mistakes and, you know, I'm, what, what he did, you know, if that is 100% true, you know, that's not okay. But yes, we're all human and, you know, we're not perfect, but, and I'm not excusing that behavior if, you know, what, you know, occurred is, you know, an actual fact. But I just can't, I, I just, it makes me so upset when I see people that, like, make it, and then they just fucking, like, fuck it up and throw it away. Like, if you don't want it, like, you know, I'll, I'll take over, like, you know, sub in, I'll sub in, <laughs> sit on the bench, I'll, you know, I'll come in and play. <laughs> people just don't realize what they have, or maybe they, their egos get so big that they feel like they can't lose it when... You can lose it at any moment, and that's where that's where you fuck up, and that's why you see the you know the people, the actors especially, or musicians or whatever that have that longevity. You know, for the most part, you know, they're a little strategic, and they maybe they did take things for granted because I mean, let's be honest. You know, for the most part, for entertainers that aren't born in the industry. You know, meaning that their parents or someone, are, you know, are in the industry, you know, they already had connections, you know, if they, ha if they did the whole hustle and grind, you know, well, first of all, anyone that has, you know, that does that, well, and I'm not even just saying acting, it could be music, or comedy, art, you know, any, or business, you know, anything that has a, a big goal or a big dream or something that's just, you know, not the norm, like the, you know, the, I don't, I don't want to say the practical, you know, thing to do. I mean, I guess, I mean, in some eyes, you know, going to college is more practical than pursuing a career in acting, um, which is crazy when you think about that. Like, yes, I mean, yes, I know the odds are, are, are crazy. And, and yes, having a degree is good, but like, in what, in what fucking, what, what major? And also, like, is that what you want to do? Like, so many people get pushed, you know, not as much, you know, like in the, you know, looking back, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 plus years ago. But even till this day, so many people are still pressured by, you know, family or, you know, society that I have to go to college or, you know, even if, if it's not something they want to do, like, yes, if you want to be a doctor or something that, you know, requires it requires a degree, of course, I understand, but don't go to college just for the fuck of it, for a party experience, you know, you know, to, to, you, don't fucking spend, you know, six figures, come out of school, six figures in debt, just for having a party, you know, experience in, in, you know, majoring in English when you're not even going to take out, you know, take it up <laughs> or like agriculture or some shit. If you're a lot of people's parents make them and then put their children in. Yeah, that I much. see, I see it all the time. I've seen it all the time. You know, I, you know, it's crazy. It, it is, you know, I, I didn't acquire student loan debt until this year. <laughs> like I just started trying to get uh, my bachelor's and, and it, it's kind of crazy that I did that because I always said, I'm never going to do that. But it's something just called me to, to want to get my bachelor's. And I don't know why I got my associate's degree and I I'm doing something completely different than what my associate's degree is in. But I, I don't know. It's, it's like for me, going to college for my bachelor's is just something to do almost. And it's also just, I don't know, like I like, I do like learning and I feel like there's certain things that I, I still don't know when it comes to like uh, business and, and marketing. And it's always good to have, I feel like to, to have a degree if, if that's what you want to do. You know, I, I, I started going to college, like basically, right out of high school and because of life uh, decisions that I made, I, I didn't end up getting my associate's degree until like 
last year and um and I'm 30 now and there's nothing, and I feel there's like, nothing wrong with that but Maddie I do have one question is your favorite class right now Lana Del Rey 101 uh yeah you know <laughs> I actually took that class because I figured it would be one of the best classes when I meet her I just know everything about her <laughs> I can just really I impressed can't, I can't name college. I, I can't name one song by her Fuck you. No, no, I, this is not this is not like a shade or anything. Like I know she's a talented artist, but like I honestly like I I, I, I really don't. Like I I'm not even trying to be like like I'm not even like trying to like shit on her. Like I I I just haven't taken the time to really listen to her music like that. She did a lot of songs uh like collaborating with certain people that are, are pretty cool but my favorite my favorite song from her is is ride and it's just because of being able to relate to to it so much to the message behind that song and um but she did really cool collaborations with like asap rocky um i okay she, yeah i think i remember that you remember that yeah do you like yeah. do you like lord Yes, I fucking you, love you know, Lord. Do you know this song? Do you know the song? Um, there's one song that I that I really like by her, and it's the beat that's just so fucking crazy. Hold on, I gotta pull it up. If you know this song, you'll know like what I mean by like the bridge is just fucking crazy. It's the hard feelings song, the loveless hard feelings loveless. Have you, you never heard that song by her? It's the only song I have on my fucking phone. That's Fire. crazy. Yeah. I I've def I've definitely heard it because I've I've heard all of her songs. Because I I wanted to sample like that one part of that, that like when it goes into the the bridge and it, it it just the instrumental is just you gotta you gotta listen to it like it's crazy like it's one of the hardest I gotta like I gotta actually after this episode I want to find out who produced that because I want to interview that person because. That is one of the craziest beats, but I will say, I don't like that the second part of the song because she she did like a one of those like not like a mashup. I guess it is sort of a mashup, one of those like kind of thing. Like I don't, you know, she should have just kept it as you know, she should have split it into two different songs. But um, that song is really good, and that's the only the only song I have uh, on my phone by her. Yeah, she's she's great. It says it says here that Jack Antonoff and Frank Dukes and Lords were the producers of that of that song. I I have to look it up, but I I love all of her music. I feel like if I would say that my voice sounded like anybody, it would be like her and Lana Del Rey mixed together. Um, because I I just loved them growing up, and I feel like their range is really close to mine. But it she she has some really cool songs and and the beats behind it. I remember when I first heard Lords, I I was obsessed. Like I that, I that could, song I, that was it Royals or something? Yeah, but that, that's not that, the that, one I love. Though. That shit there, that shit was that was a massive hit. Oh, yeah. She she was young too. I think she, I think she was like she wasn't even eighteen or I think she was like pretty young when she recorded that. That that's what set her off. That's, that's yeah. definitely what set her off. That's crazy. She, she's so beautiful. What, what, Spe what speaking of beautiful, we I got you know for you know speaking of female singers, the glow up on Miley is crazy. Like I, like like I always thought she you know I never thought she was ugly or anything. But is it me or did something change? Like I know she like her hair, but like the glow, she like gl glowed the fuck up. I don't know if it's just me, but like I think she's just happy now. And when women nah, are happy, she, she, yeah, she didn't do anything to her body. Yeah, I know I she know. didn't. That's, that's what I'm saying. Her. Yeah, she doesn't need to. She she probably just. I think that she might have gained a little weight, but I'm not saying in a bad way. Like I think she looks healthy. Like no, she looks. No, she looks the best that she's ever looked. You know now, like she, she looks. You know, I mean, she's always again. She's always been a beautiful woman, but like, 
I, I never been like, oh, yeah, like, she's hot. Like, yeah, Miley Cyrus is hot. But, like, recently, like, she's pretty, she's, she's looking good. I ain't gonna lie. She, she's even, my... Even though, even though she does look like a fucking, you know, South Boston bartender in some of those pictures, <laughs> you know. Oh, no. <laughs> Miley, oh, no. Miley still look good. She look good now. Like again, I ne I never used to be like, yeah, you know, she's hot, but like, no, the glow up, the glow up is real. You know, I I, I would <laughs> not mind singing Malibu with her, in Malibu. <laughs> oh my God! Speaking of Malibu Barbies, there's there's a new uh, <laughs> there's a new like pop up Barbie. Malibu Cafe that's happening in New York City and Chicago. So all the plastic bitches have somewhere to really go. They have their own Pull party. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Come this summer for all you plastic bitches. Barbie you cafe. Attention Barbies. <laughs> Pull up with your plastic ass. <laughs> Report to the Malibu Barbie Cafe. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh man! Oh. <laughs> Yo, so finally we got to tell the listeners, Maddie finally watched Good Will Hunting. Did Did you watch it with David, or did you watch it by yourself? No, I tried to start watching it with David. He was like, "Yeah, I, I already seen that." He didn't I was see like, it. He was, he was like, oh, no, I don't think you've seen. I don't think you've seen the full movie. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, but I, 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 I got a, I got, I, I mean, you might have, but I don't think he could, he could like keep up with it at that moment. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, we, we, we all, we all been there. Yeah, <laughs> but it was, it it's a good me, movie, right? Like, it, it is. It took me like two different sittings to to watch it because I have a little kid, but it, it's it's so amazing. I I. I was definitely moved by it, and I cried multiple times during it. So, who do you think? I I think I know the answer, but who do you think had the best performance? I mean, Robin Williams, yeah. uh, but yeah. but yeah. Matt Damon also like the, the scene where he he was like, "It's not your fault." That yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I I couldn't even. I couldn't hold hold back the tears because I felt like Robin Williams was talking to me <laughs> when yeah. when that when I seen yeah. that part. I'm like, hey, all right, inner child, yeah. inner child. That's that's what happened in that movie. It, it's a it, it was such a great movie because, like you said, when when I go to Boston, that bench is still there in mm -hmm. in that in that scene, and I I, I can't wait to sit in it. I want to reenact the scene. I don't know who I want to be though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ain't. I guess you gotta play the Matt Damon role. I have to play that role, or you? No, you gotta. No, I guess David's gonna have to play. No, actually, no. How would that work? Hold on, let's let's figure this out. <laughs> All right, let's figure this out on the year. Um, <laughs> yeah, four four fifty six a.m. thoughts with JT and Maddie. JT Brought to you and Maddie. JT Way Media. Incorporate. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, uh, I want to. I want to be the uh, voiceover actor for all of your uh, little little jargons that that, that you, you say on the podcast. <laughs> you just got JT. I know. I got to get so many more of those done. Uh, With my South Jersey accent. <laughs> <laughs> what What's like the like the most typical, like uh, if someone were to make fun of like a South Jersey accent, like a word that someone would like say. Water. W water? Water, yeah. Like W-O-O-T-E-R? Like that's how it's pronounced, yes, yeah. but I'm talking about Okay, like I'm gonna have some water. I'm gonna have some water. Yeah, let me have some water. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we say water. Nah, I, you're lying. Yeah, no, I say it like water nah. now. I, <laughs> no, that's how we say it. Like, <laughs> and another thing, uh, South Jersey 
I'm Boston just, I, I, I'm not shitting on New Jersey, you know, because I, I got to say, one of, the, one of the funniest things that it always cracks me up is when, you know, people like in the Midwest, like Ohio, when they say roof, the roof, the roof, the roof, the roof, the roof. <laughs> why are you barking, bro? <laughs> like DMX, <laughs> like what? Well, how do you say like uh drawer? In, in bo- like it. In Boston or like in, in Boston, yeah. How do you uh, how do you I say? Mean, I I I would say drawer, but like some people probably would say drawer or like uh, dresser. Well, in in certain parts of New Jersey, people say draw. Get get the get the get the pants out of the draw. But <laughs> what the fuck? That's not yeah, how I say. Yeah, it. Well, I've, yeah, th- I've heard people say that in New England. New England, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh. It's crazy, it's crazy. I the accent. Exactly. Like, like I think you're gonna fucking laugh so hard when you when you guys when you when you and uh, your daughter and, and David come like you, once you like see how like you know how we like act and like just like the driving. I mean, even though it's you know not that <laughs> far off from like you know New York or like Jersey or Pennsylvania, you know Philly or whatever, but like you'll see like it's it's just a, it's so aggressive. I don't know. I, I can't wait. I want to I want to walk around like the most populated spot in Boston just so I can get the real essence of Boston. Like I like I, I think I told you before I've been uh, to Boston, but only yeah, at in Logan Airport, a, a layover. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, it, that it, doesn't it, count. And I also actually when I was uh, when I was over the road for a little bit, uh I was in, at like a truck stop there, but I didn't. I didn't actually get to like you know see the city and 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 go around and stuff like that. But yeah, that, that's that's one of the places I I really want to go to. And then after that is is uh, California for sure. Yeah, uh, I love Cali. You know, I, I obviously am moving back there soon. And I'm gonna have to live there for a while, but I I don't think I'm gonna live there forever just because I mean just the taxes are so high. I mean yes, the taxes are high here. And a, a new report just came out again. You know now Boston is officially number one for the most expensive in rent out of New York City, San Francisco, Hawaii, L.A. Boston's number one. Oh wow! I think it, it was That's... like an average, like it's like twenty six hundred a month for like a one bedroom or some shit. Man, we're I'm looking for a, an apartment now, and I'm in Philadelphia. If the listeners don't know, and like it's the rents really bad out here, but it's not as bad as Jersey. Um, like of course, if you want to be in like the nicest, safest area, you're going to be paying like at least at least 2300 a month because if not For if you if you bedroom? no i mean you can it, all right so there's a, a a really you know nice town uh, or area whatever in in philadelphia called like rittenhouse square and that's what's, like what's I don't, I don't mean to cut you off what's the like richest town or city in pennsylvania well, in Philadelphia, I know the the richest uh, places in Philadelphia is like Rittenhouse Square, uh, Queens Village, and then like Maniunk, uh, Northeast Philadelphia is like the nicest areas. But you'll in Pennsylvania, I don't even know because there's right right outside of philadelphia there's like fucking mansions so i, I, I think that that cause i was wondering because uh michael rubin you know michael he, he lives out here I, well yeah he, I don't he owns the the 76ers he, he he's the you know the white entrepreneur that hangs out with meek mill and you know yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. He, he, owns, he, he owns fanatics as well Wow, yeah, his house is fucking huge. I, I, I don't I, even... I've never seen a picture of it. Is is it really is it big, the house? Yeah, I'm looking at a uh where, like a is, is it, don't don't say where it is, but like is is it like 
in a neighborhood it, that you recognize? Like, no, this is this is out this is outside of the city for sure. Oh yeah, um, sure, yeah. And it's seven seventy million. Seventy or seventeen. Seventy. Oh. Seven. I. Oh shit. shit. Oh, oh man. I feel broke. I and that's obviously not his only property. No, I it's not. And that, that's what made that make that that's what hurts more. And he he also just closed or he he closes on a four forty three point five million dollar pet house. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, I, I gotta stop cursing. I really I need to get a swear jar for honor with JT because I don't want that to do my shit, thing. Like, your, your daughter's gonna be rich. My mom, you know, my mom always told me, like, just if you curse, it just makes you sound like you don't have any other intelligent word to say. I, yeah, if, yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. For, so, for sure. some people, yes. But if you look at a lot of in highly intelligent, successful people, they swear a lot. There is a lot of links and in, in, in studies that show that people that do swear a lot it does link with a high IQ. Now, does everyone that swears a lot have an I, high, a high IQ? Of course not. But it is linked in a lot of studies, which is kind of fascinating to think about. Yeah, I, it, it, is, it is kind of crazy because I like people- I just gotta shut off the alarm, just keep talking, Maddie. Oh snap! Yeah, I forget. I forget what I was even about to say, but I'm just sitting here, still looking at Michael Rubin's forty-three point five million dollar penthouse, and even when I have that much money, I don't think that I, I'm gonna want to spend it on stuff like that unless it's like an investment. Like thinking about all these people that have all this money and spend it on things like penthouses that they're probably never even in, just like drives me completely insane. I I I really can't even. I can't even think about what I would do with that type of money. First off, I would I would help people. I know that a major thing that I want to do when I get the money that I want is is helping out homeless people. And yeah, me too. It I have to. It's like I I've been there. I was I was literally where where the where they're at, and and maybe for not an extended amount of time, but I still. Can, I can empathize with with them because people don't even look at look at them like they're human. I know, you know? I know. Like, like we we uh, follow what's that YouTube channel? I want to give them a shout out. Was Invisible People? Invisible People. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Out to, I, shout out to them, like the guy who runs that, because you know it's sad. You know when you watch these videos of these people, and you know it's so sad. Like you hear their story, and like it, it's crazy because. Not everyone is like this, but there's so many people that like, you know, I've, I've seen, I've watched and heard stories of like people that were former, you know, vice presidents of fortune 500 companies and lawyers and accountants and, you know, millionaires at one point, you know, yeah. and then be like homeless and, and then hear the story and then just, you know, and it all, it, they all talk about, and you can just see, you know, I can feel and see the pain of just feeling like the world views you like you're worthless or like you're invisible. And that, that's really fucking sad. I um, was watching a, a video about ho homelessness and um, it was like, it says the, the most craziest thing. Why aren't eye contact with homeless people matters? Like, what? why do you need to tell humans that? Like, and, yeah. and the fact that uh, invisible people posted that, I'm not saying anything like they shouldn't have said that because everybody probably that walks by a homeless person in a day doesn't even look at them. Yeah, let alone I, I, I always try. So I, I mean, like, if someone's, like, you know, awake or, like, you know, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll like acknowledge them, you know, and again, I don't like to talk about on the, you know, talk about this, but like, I, I help when I can, you know, with yeah. what I have and, um, I don't know. I, I, I just like doing that. You know, I, 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 I like helping people, you know, when I can, um, 
because I, I, I know what I've never been literally homeless. I, I've almost been homeless multiple times, but I'm not going to say, I, you know, I lived under a bridge or like I, I had to live on a street or, you know, for a night. I never had to experience that, but I can only imagine, you know, I've had, you know, other experiences that, you know, aren't maybe that the, the same, but in somewhat relatable. And, and I, so I do understand, you know, to a certain degree, obviously not fully because I haven't fully experienced that. And I don't hope to, and I don't hope anyone has to experience that. And that's one issue that one main thing that needs to be fixed, you know, like it's, and, and people don't give a fuck. The government doesn't give a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. And, you know, we see this and we wonder why, you know, San Francisco is shit. And we wonder why in you know, parts of Philly, New York, you know, Boston, you know, Florida, you know, all, all everywhere, you know, we wonder why there's such a problem with homelessness and, you know, it's linked with obviously, you know, you don't have to be a fucking scientist to know that it's going to be linked with mental health. And then obviously, you know, with that, you know, obviously links to, for some people, you know, drug addiction, because not, you know, people that are mentally ill don't have health care or insurance or the resources or the money for the copay or the money, you know, to see a doctor, to get medication, to treat whatever that they're dealing with. So, like, it, it, it's so fucked up. You know, like, yes, yeah. I do understand that it does cost, it would cost, cost a lot of money, but like we give money away to all these different countries and all of this shit, but we could literally fucking fix homelessness if we, if, if, if the, if, you know, the world and society wanted to, we could fix homelessness like that, like literally overnight almost. Yeah, literally, that, literally. If, if, is- if, if the most powerful people wealthiest people just chipped in a little bit that wouldn't it wouldn't even affect them you know yeah we 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 dehumanize these homeless people and i had an encounter uh a couple a few days ago uh with the homeless gentleman and i was about to get on uh the subway and um i was waiting it was delayed because it was like uh, the day before Easter or something like that. And I, uh, he was like talking to us and I remember like David was kind of getting a little like anxious, but just because it's a scary fucking place to be in Philadelphia, you know what I mean? And yeah. so, so, but basically like this dude was like talking and then I could, I heard him like say something to himself. And then I looked over and he, and he was taking this uh, Pellegrino, like sparkling water uh, out of the trash can. And he was like, he was like, I wonder if I could use this. And I just looked at him and I was like, it's gonna burn. And and he looked at me like, holy shit, like she knows what I'm talking about. And like, I'm, you know, I, 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 right now I don't look like I, or at that moment I didn't look like I had a past or even would know what, what he was referring to. But I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying, but he was, he was speaking about, you know, in, I don't. In, and it, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, I you do. don't. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, but like it's just, it's just like people don't even talk to them and they, or and act like they don't even exist. Like hearing something like that and to think that like he, he was about to go and 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 do that and and be in, in so much pain. I I just I wanted to say it because I know from experience and and I and after like like talking to him for a little bit it just makes you realize like it could be anybody because he, he, it was just, it's just sad, you know, see, seeing this go on and, and in, in the city and so close to, so close to home. Like it wasn't even like this, like 10 years ago out here in Philadelphia, it, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. And, and when my, and when my dad was, you know, growing up, it wasn't like this at all. Like it, it used to be a place where, you know, you just were going to, to maybe go to an art gallery or, or watch a show or, you know, it's, it wasn't this like thing where you could just be walking down the street and, and, and get, get killed at any moment. Like it's, it's so, it's so prevalent. Oh, that yeah. we, need to- I mean, we just seen that with uh, rest in peace to the, 
CEO and founder of Cash App in San Francisco. You know, like it, it's crazy. Yeah. That's I, mean, I I think on the last podcast I like I think I like said something a little bit uh, I don't know if it was like gruesome or just like harsh or too soon about that oh, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I didn't mean it like that I yeah just I know have, yeah I know that, that it was just, yeah humor sometimes it, it was stupid but <laughs> I you know I think that I think that once people. Uh, start to treat people like people no matter what they look like or act like or how what they're saying it, the world would be a lot better of a place for us to raise our children in and just to exist in in general definitely no i 100 percent agree um i, I do want to say um shout out to purple rose supply.com if you go to purplerosesupply.com and enter promo code JT20, you'll receive 20% off. Now, it does exclude some limited edition premium items, um, including refurbished molds. But other than that, you know, most of the products, 20% off. And they make amazing products. I mean, from the Canacare, the Canagar, to you know the amazing wraps that i use you know i don't only just smoke blunt so i do smoke papers and those are the papers that i smoke um so if you are you know looking for you know switch up you know some or add on to your, your smoking accessories and things like that definitely head over to purplerosesupply.com enter promo code jt20 for 20 percent off and like i said before you can watch the show full episode on YouTube at On Here with JT. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, you can um, to follow me on Instagram is Justin Thomas Insta. On Air with JT also on Instagram, YouTube On Air with JT, Twitter On Air with JT, Facebook Justin Thomas, Facebook On Air with JT. TikTok, Justin Thomas, TikTok, Snapchat, Justin Thomas, SC. I know that's a lot. So for everywhere to follow me, to listen to me, to get in contact with me, everything is accessible right over at onairwithjt.com. And if, if you are interested in advertising, being a partner, um, possibly, you know, being a, you know, partnership, sponsorship, whatever it might be, uh, please, serious inquiries only. Send me an email at onairwithjt at gmail.com. Uh, Maddie, where can people follow you again? You can follow me on Facebook, uh, Madeline Haley Marquez. Instagram is Madeline underscore Haley underscore Marquez. And it's also Madeline Haley Marquez for TikTok and YouTube. All right. Uh, anything you want to say before we uh, end today's show? Uh, you can follow David Chin. Oh, yeah. uh, Facebook, David Facebook. Chin. Yeah, Facebook. Da- Nismo Chin underscore 23. N-I-S-M-O-C-H-I-N underscore 23. And his TikTok is Chinny Murders. And if you go follow him, comment and wish him a happy belated motherfucking birthday. And tell him that yes. AT sent you. <laughs> this man is 32 years old now Jeez, I feel so, It's so crazy, Maddie Because, like I, I, you know I first met David when I first moved to Florida So I was 14 I was 14 when I first met this man And, like, now we're grown-ass adults He got a whole family and shit <laughs> Like I'm over here fucking watch you know watching fucking Grey's Anatomy eating fucking Ben and Jerry's. No, nah, I'm not watching Grey's Anatomy, but like yeah. <laughs> oh, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> um, that one actress is. I always thought she was kind of hot. Which which one it, is it? The blonde. Oh, the that's that's the the main character, right? Yeah. Not yeah, like she's not like, right. like like I mean she she's beautiful like, uh, but. Definitely. I mean, I remember like I talked about this before, but like when because like I used to watch a lot of episodes of Law and Order with my 
whether it was my grandparents or my mom, but sometimes like I, my mom would, you know, especially when like Desperate Housewives was like a show and was like on air, like I was even as a kid, I was like this Eva Longoria girl woman is fucking gorgeous, <laughs> you know, fucking ten year old JT is like, yo, one day I'm gonna get that. <laughs> You know what's crazy? The person that I was like that with growing up was Will Smith. Like, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I watching that like ten years old. I was like, I'm gonna marry Will Smith, Dad. Uh, oh no, my first, my first like real, like real, like crushes was uh, from Sister Sister. Oh shit! <laughs> Tia to marry, yeah. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> when I well, when I was a kid. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I, they're, I, they're very beautiful. I mean, to this day, you know. Um, I mean, and obviously, you know, Hillary Duff. Oh yeah, Hil Hillary Duff. Like, do you do you ever wonder, like, how have you she was seen? Able have you seen? Have you seen what she's working with? I mean, she looks great, and she 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 has she has kids beep, and. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! She, I, you know, actually, I haven't seen what she's working with. Now, I, now I need to. I don't even want to look at her in no, that way. Like, no, 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 this is fire. You, you have like, that. You have to. What do I type in? Like, Hillary Duff booty pic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but one, one is one is a little bit over, uh, photoshopped, but but it's not that far off. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, damn, okay, I, I didn't know that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally a whole Pinterest forum about it. Of course. It. <laughs> she looks Ooh, great. Are you surprised? Oh. What are you surprised? The, wait, the one with the pink dress? She, I don't, do you think that's edited? It looks good. No, hmm. I don't think that one. No, this one I think she's like wearing like jeans or something. No, nah, I think that's all her. Damn, Hillary. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's what I, I was talking about in, Natasha Bedingfield. <laughs> Got a pocket full of sunshine, but... Now I'm just looking at Hillary That is a lucky man. Why why did you do this? Now I'm just I feel like a creeper now. Like I'm just sitting there looking at Hillary Duff's ass. No, but, but now uh, speaking yeah, of Hillary Duff again, I just want to say that she is a good role model for younger oh, yeah. women. And, and like I feel like she does not get the credit and recognition, you know, for being a massive, you know, child star and then not, you know, obviously like any human in especially in that kind of situation, she went through some stuff, but she, she didn't lose her fucking mind, which 90, you know, 8% do. Like, or, I mean, or go broke or whatever. <laughs> like, like about she, she did it the right way. Like, and, and that should, you know, that is a, someone that should be admired, obviously. And, and you know, should be credited more for for being a good influence for for younger women. Holy crap! You know she only made fifteen thousand dollars per episode. Yeah, it was for, lot, yeah, that was it was different for you know SAG back then. But now it I uh, I don't know the, the exact amount, but it's definitely over forty. Um, even if you're just like even if you're not even a uh, even if you're just a co star. Um, and that's that's like the minimum for SAG, but like obviously there's actors that make. I mean, Charlie Sheen was making over a million million dollars on Two and a Half Men. That's so insane. per episode. I mean, and then when Ashton Kutcher got it, he was making more than that per episode. That's so crazy. You know how fucking crazy that is. And then these and then you know these shows they got you know twenty plus fucking episodes in a season. And, you know, they knocked them out, you know, rather quickly. So when you when you really, you know, divide the math, them paychecks weekly are crazy. Like, yes, it's a lot of work, but like, and one thing before we end the show, you know, and I, I have so much respect for, um, wow, what's her name? I can't, can't even think of her name now. Um, I was just talking about her on Facebook, about how she's complaining. Um, shit. This is what happens when I do a podcast at four a.m. <laughs> hey man, I'm 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 looking on here too. What's I have the post? 
I'm just trying to see how far down it was. You post a lot, man. <laughs> I, I don't know where it is, but um, she, I, I can't believe I, it's like literally on the tip of my tongue. Um, <laughs> shout out to Trick Daddy, uh, that sugar song. CeeLo Green, she want that sugar. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, she was complaining about. Oh, it's um, I see, complaining about ten hour work yeah. days. Yeah. What, what, what's her name? Cause, like, it's not coming to my. Is it Cameron Diaz? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cameron so, Diaz. so Cameron. All right. All right. She. she all right. This is so crazy, and like, she's a like. I think she's uh, probably officially done with like being like the Cameron Diaz that we know, because I mean, just the fact that she made a f that kind of statement, the fact that Cameron Diaz said, you know, complaining about, you know, these back to back 10 hour work days, honey, there are actors that work, you know, overnight that work 20 plus hours in a day. And you're, you're making millions and you sign that. This is your job. You, you know, you, you, you took the role. No one fucking forced you to take the role. You know, if you didn't, if you want to be with your kids, then, then, then don't take the role. It's not like you're like, you know, you know, have zero dollars in your bank account. Like don't make like, like no director. I would assume no director. And like a lot of actors are not like really after that comment are going to be like, what? No, I don't want to work with like that. That's, and she's such a talented actress, you know, and, and yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah. Like it, how, you know, th these people end up becoming so delusional because of the bubble they're in because of the success. And, you know, you know, because once you hit that level, everybody's a, a yes man or a yes woman. Like, yes, 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 you're awesome. Yes, you're funny. Yes, you're the best. Oh, you're doing great. You know, keep it up. You know, even if you fucking suck. Like, nobody, you know, it's so rare for someone, you know, you know, for a lot of these people to have a real person in that group. And then even when there is, you know, the people around them in that circle, you know, try and kind of shove them out the way, you know, but, you know, I ain't trying to go, you know, too deep into this, because uh, I still would like to have a career in acting. <laughs> um, I think the movie that I even cared about that Cameron Diaz did was, that was teacher? bad. Teacher, yeah. <laughs> yeah she, teacher, she, she, looked, she looked good in that movie. Oh, yeah. And she, it's you so know, funny she, that she bought weed from Snoop Dogg, and they went to high school <laughs> together. That's insane. Like, I, I couldn't. I, when I hear stories like that, it just it just like makes me happy. To, it's like a small. It just, made, it just again, it shows you how like they're just real people. Yeah, they're just people. Seriously, and he's fifty years old. Like I don't know. It, it's just kind of weird. Like an, an an actress that is that well known complaining about that. Like like it and a, a ten out. You're, like you're really gonna even. Even if that's how you feel inside, you're really gonna say that out loud, like, and think that, like, people are gonna have sympathy. Like, come on. Yeah, no, oh, no shit. Her, we okay, gotta wrap. I'm fine about that, yeah. but no, I, 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 I still love her though. Oh yeah, like, yeah. It's just like, like, damn, like, like, damn, girl, like, I don't know what's going on, but like, I, I mean, I, I'm crazy, you know, but like, you definitely got something going on as well, honey. <laughs> Yo, what happened to Jason Siegel? Yeah, you know, you know, he um it's a, it's a funny that's actually a re very good question, you know. <laughs> he it, it, it you can say the same thing about like Russell Brand, you know. Oh, they, he you got know these, these these actors were in so you know they also were in a lot of movies together as well, uh ironically. Yeah. Um you know, shout out to Judd Apatow, you know. Um, but yeah, um, he was killing it for a long time. I mean, it, it, that's, that's, and he's still a great actor, but that's, that's the thing with like Hollywood. Like, and I know, like, you know, it's so hard to get that longevity. Like, yes, you know, I would love to have a long career in acting, but I don't know. So, like, when you, if you get that opportunity, you have to, you know, seize that motherfucking moment, like M says, you know, and, you know, really be smart also financially, you know, like, because even if you get that, you know, 
couple million dollar check, ten million dollar check for a movie or something, you know, and you blow it, and then you know something you say something stupid or you do something or whatever, you know, then what? You know, and that that's why so many people go wrong, and yeah, it, it's it's a tough industry, but you know. Sad because I, I I loved him, and there's so many other ones like that. Like I'm, where, where did they go? Oh yeah, like, like another one is um the, the dude that played in Entourage, Ad, uh, Adrian. You know the the guy the guy that a lot of women like go crazy for he, the the, good, the decent looking guy the, the, the he has like blue eyes. Oh yeah, hair, yeah, yeah, Adrian. Grenier, Griner, or I think, yeah. Um, yeah, really good actor. Did you have you ever seen the show Entourage? No, his yeah. eyes are really creamy though. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, know. I know that's well, yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that, I've, that's one thing, man. I I wish I didn't have brown eyes, but I, it, it's I, cool though. I I did find out that I can because. Brown eye people can now get a procedure to get their eyes blue, <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that because then I yeah. feel like I'd be part of like a you know Eiffel 65 song like I'm blue. I'm blue, I'm blue. You should get <laughs> I'm blue. <laughs> you should I feel like you should get like just blue contacts first and see if you like it, and then if you want to. Want to really change it? Then change it. You yeah, know. I'm just joking. Yeah. I. I mean. I mean. I'm joking, and I'm not. Like. Yes, I would like. I. If I could pick, I, I would rather not have brown eyes. But like, I'm happy with my eyes. But like, I sometimes do get jealous. Not jealous, but like, when I see like someone with like nice eyes, or like, damn, I wish they. Had, if I had those eyes, you know, to my face, you know, or bring bring me up a couple points. <laughs> if 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 it makes you feel any better. Having blue eyes is is actually like the worst because they're more sensitive to sun and they also like people with blue eyes also have worse vision um, than people. What, with, that, what about that mix of that blue and green type shit? That's like that's like a like the hazel you talking about or? I don't even know. My sister has blue green eyes. Yeah. Uh, so you know Mila Kunis has. One like green eye and then one blue eye. Mm. Did you know that? But no, it's because I never, I never noticed that. It's because she had an eye infection. But some people are just born in one eye. But some people are just born with. Uh, Damn, she got a pink eye. Different. Color. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened, but. <laughs> Did I ever tell you? I don't even care. I'm gonna say this, but like, this is like how bad. Like my like, <laughs> like. I was on such a bad luck streak for so long in my life. <laughs> I went to Florida like maybe like six years ago and oh for Christmas and somehow I caught pink eye on the airplane just by sitting in my seat. I didn't, I, you know, I, I did obviously, you know, go to the bath and I urinated and like I washed my hands and like I didn't do anything, you know, thing crazy, but somehow... I got pink eye and that shit was so crazy that it actually started to like close my vision and I, I, I couldn't really see and I had to have someone drive me to like the hospital. And then I, I, uh, I think David even fucking helped me. I think he was, oh. I think he was in Boston when this was happening. You said, uh, you, you look like people say you look like Vinny from Jersey shore, right? People have. Yeah. You know, one of the episodes of Jersey Shore, after he got done in the smush room, he had to go get some <laughs> penicillin or some shit for for uh, for pink eye. Because normally that happens when you're like, I don't know, like letting people sit on your face or something. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand. But I, that's what I thought. That, that, that That's like what is like, it's true. But like that is a way you can get it. But you can also get it just by, you know, being it's bacteria you can get it just by not like having someone fucking sit on your face or fart on your face or whatever like it it, it was crazy <laughs> it, it got it got so bad that i could not see that's horrible oh my god could you imagine like 
you like go in blind, but well, you well, know. Well, what was even more crazy is that one time, um, I took this medication for anxiety, like in 2010, and that shit gave me a side effect. I started to get like Bell's palsy. And you know what that is? Like I start, like, you know, when you like you start speaking, yeah. like, 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 yeah, like, like, yeah, like, I, I it was scared. I was scared. I was like, holy shit. That, you know, you know I, they were like, why are you talking like that? I'm like, what do you mean? And like, and then like, I recorded myself. I'm like, holy shit. Oh my goodness. Could you imagine having to do the podcast like that? That was permanent for the rest oh, of your. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God. we got to wrap up today's show. Um, again, where can people follow you, Maddie? You can follow me on Facebook, uh, Madeline Haley Marquez, Instagram, Madeline underscore Haley underscore Marquez, and TikTok and YouTube are both Madeline Haley Marquez as All well. Right. And David, David Chin on Facebook and Instagram, Nismo underscore. Nismo, <laughs> Nismo Chin. Uh, I, was, I was close. Right? You almost had it. I almost had it. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm sorry, David. I'll get there. I promise. I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, if you are interested in advertising on the podcast, of course, please, serious inquiries only, send me an email at onairwithjt at gmail.com. Uh, head over to onairwithjt.com to get all the links to be able to follow me on social media, uh, get in contact with me, I have the links to listen or to watch the show is onairwithjt.com. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day. The motherfucking JT way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. JT did it again. This is On Air with JT. Join JT, visionary and host for a 420 friendly improv and variety talk show. Featuring pop culture, news, interviews, debates and the home of the famous JT rants. Here... Mental health awareness is at the forefront, with JT on a mission to inspire and spread mental health awareness. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio and YouTube. You can stay up to date and get in touch by heading to onairwithjt.com. To contact the show directly or for business inquiries, Use on air with JT at gmail.com. On air with JT, hosted by JT and Maddie. On air with JT. Listen to On Air with JT on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Go to onairwithjt.com. If you are a business owner, brand, company, or anyone selling a product and you want to advertise on this podcast, email the show directly at onairwithjt at gmail.com. We are offering extremely low rates for a limited time. Once again, email the show at onairwithjt at gmail.com. JT did it again. JT here. You guys know I'm a stoner. I I love to roll my blunts, my joints. Let's be honest. It, it can be kind of time consuming, especially for me. I'm always on the run. You know, I'm always on the go, whether it's the podcast, acting, business. It's very time consuming to be rolling back to back to back to back blunts or joints. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? So, and even with, you know, rolling joints and everything, it can be kind of difficult. And sometimes they come out looking ugly and, you know, ain't nobody got want to smoke that shit. I mean, let's be honest. You know, I ain't going to get you high. Rolling joints from hand can be difficult and they often can come out looking kind of ugly. Ain't nobody got time for that. More smoking, less rolling with a canagar that burns longer. Instead of rolling four joints or blunts back to back, next time with your friends, make a canagar that will save you time and burn just as long, if not longer. Even in the smallest size that holds one to two grams, you're still getting more out of that gram in a canagar as opposed to if you smoked a regular blunt or a joint since it burns way longer. You get to fully enjoy each and every single gram. You can also get the perfect looking roll every single time since the weed is compressed into a perfect shape that will stand out. You might be asking yourself, well, how does it work? Well, I'll tell you. The weed is compressed into the mold with a skewer that's placed into the middle of the airflow. And since the weed is tightly compressed, it leaves less space for air pockets in your roll and hence less 
burn speed. Head over to purplerosesupply.com and use promo code JT20 to receive 20% off. Purple Rose Supply is currently offering a crazy deal right now up until the 13th. Now, if you use my promo code JT20, you will receive 20% off. And then what's even better, there's also going to be a 420 sale. So you can't lose. All you're going to do is win and get high like me. So stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your bud and get a can of gar right now. Head over to purplerosesupply.com. Use promo code JT20 to get 20% off. This excludes limited edition premium items along refurbished molds. Tell them JT sent you. Once again, head over to purplerosesupply.com. Enter promo code JT20 to receive 20% off. That's purplerosesupply.com. Promo code JT20 for 20% off. JT approved.